We want to get back to that late breaking news we first told you about at the top of the hour. Our Dylan Collier was following up on an overnight house fire this morning when someone came out of the house and started shooting. All this happening on the city's west side. Our crew is safe and actually joins us now from the corner of Noises and Noria Street, just a few blocks away from where it all happened. Dylan, can you tell us exactly what happened and what led to all of this? Sure, Alicia. Uh, last night there was a fire, a uh, suspicious fire that had arson involved because uh, they suspected that someone had fired bullets into the house at 234 Noria, and sure enough, there were bullet casings while we were here. So we were called out this morning to follow up on that story, to talk to family members uh, about what happened, who owned the home, what were the circumstances in play last night. Uh, we had interviewed a family member who was upset. Uh, it had been her father's home. The home had been in their uh, family for several generations. And there was a younger man inside the house, probably in his 20s, digging through the rubble. He had a large stick and he was sorting through the rubble left behind uh, by the fire. Uh, we'd been here for at least 20 minutes, had no issues whatsoever. Uh, and then all of a sudden, one of the family members started screaming that he had guns and he was going to kill us. Uh, we looked and sure enough, he had two large handguns. He came down the front steps of the home, uh, fired a couple of times. Uh, I went this way. Our photographer went that way. The folks that were in the SUV took off as well. He fired several more shots that appeared to be uh, that direction from the house and then towards the left, so away from where I was running. Uh, we then called 911 separately. I, I think SAPD got several calls. Uh, we then saw the suspect get on a bicycle, flee from the house, heading west. Uh, he went one block over, so now the 300 block of Noria, ditched the bike, jumped over a large metal gate, and then went inside of a home. And as of this moment, so just before 1 o'clock at this point, so nearly two hours later, he's still barricaded inside of a house in the 300 block of Noria. Nobody shot, thank goodness, uh, but several shots were fired. I'm told uh, he could face, once he's arrested, as many as seven counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Dylan, well, we're glad to see that you and the crew are okay. Where exactly are you standing now? Because we know you were, were moved, and obviously after that happened, you had to take cover. So tell us about that. We took cover behind an Escalade when he first came out of the house with the handguns. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know what to do in a situation like that. He fired twice, uh, according to my recollection, may have been more times. That enough was uh, enough information to tell me to get out of there. Um, and so I headed east, our photographer headed west, the family in the SUV that he fired at, which are his own family members, mind you, uh, they took off as well. Their vehicle was hit by gunfire, but no one inside of that car was hit. And we sort of just scattered throughout the neighborhood. We're now at Nueces in Norio, which is about a block and a half east of where the initial shooting took place and about two and a half blocks away to the east from the house that he's now barricaded inside. Uh, I, I was also told by the family that SWAT, or at least some sort of SAPD presence, had been here Saturday night for a potential barricaded situation. I have not been able to confirm that information from police. Uh, we do know that they were here last night as, long, as well as firefighters for a house fire that pretty much gutted the inside of the property at 234 Noria. All right, Dylan, thank you very much. Obviously, we're very thankful that you and our photographer are okay, and we're also thankful that you were able to gather yourself enough to give us a report and let us know exactly what happened over there. And if uh, you're just tuning in, he was he's okay, and he will be following up on that throughout this afternoon on our website, KSET.com. And, of course, we'll have more from Dylan at KSET 12 News at 5 and, again, at KSET 12 News at 6. So, once again, thankful that he is okay. Absolutely. Well, we'll be back with more information after the break.